Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Rock Hippo Week continues here on Big Dave is Cheap with Microvolts. Microvolts is a third-person shooter which I would probably describe as a classic deathmatch experience. What do I mean by that? Well, you're given a typical array of weapons, machine gun, gatling gun, bazooka, grenade launcher, etc. You're pointed at a bunch of opposition players and you're told to go wreck their shit. And the game gives you the tools necessary to do that and they set you in a world that is very fun, very irreverent, and uh, doesn't take itself too seriously. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, the lore of this game, give you the, the lore in 30 seconds on this game. You're a toy. You play as an action figure, and your action figures come alive at night after everybody's gone to sleep, and they fight with military weapons over the precious energy that they need to run their mechanisms. Yeah, that's pretty freaking cool. So this means that you play in very interesting environments like on a computer desk, in a western playset, on a chessboard, in a kitchen, etc, etc. If you've ever seen the movie Toy Soldiers, it's Toy Soldiers come to life in a video game. And it's, it's, it's fun. I mean, I have to admit, it's a hell of a fun time. I really, really enjoy it. Now there's a lot of stuff that I could talk about in this outside of the game interface. I'm not interested in doing that because I'm going to bog you guys down with too much information. I'm going to keep you on this stupid screen for like 15 minutes and nobody wants to sit here as I ramble about upgrading weapons and characters and the clothing options and all this stuff. The main question that I want answered when I see a game like this is, can you buy power? Is it pay to win? And I'll answer that question with a yes or no. Yes. It is possible to purchase for real money more powerful items than you can buy by using in-game currency. Now, I'm not going to delve really deep into this because this isn't intended to be a full-on review. It's just an extended first impression. You know, I've been playing this game for several months. I want to give you guys an introduction to this game so you can know whether you want to waste your time downloading it. Because if you get this game, you look at the monetization model and it doesn't work for you, well, at the very least, you've wasted some time. You're not out any money, luckily, but you are out time. And for some folks like myself, time is an extremely precious commodity and uh, you can't buy more of it. So let's talk about the, uh, the monetization. Let's talk about buying power. That's going to be the main thing that we're going to look at as we examine microvolts. I will tell you that the, pur the purchasing of power is not egregious. It's not overdone. It's not unforgivable, at least not to me. You can make the decision for yourself. So uh, quickly, let's familiarize ourselves with our currency, micro points. That is the in-game currency that you earn by playing games. It seems to come at a pretty decent rate, and I am an average player, and I haven't had any trouble acquiring enough to buy the things that I want. Rock tokens, of course, we know that is the rock hippo currency that you can purchase with real money. 10,000 rock tokens is available for purchase for $10. There you have it. Let's head to the shop and let's talk about the ability to buy power. First of all, let me let me introduce you to the least offensive ability to buy power. This is buying power only in the purest technical definition of, of the word, of the phrase. I guess buying power is not a word, it's a phrase. Here's the Mad Wrench. The Mad Wrench can be purchased for micro points. The micro points weapons are level gated. This wrench has the following statistics. The advanced mad wrench, which can be purchased free of level with rock tokens, has these stats. Number one, number two, number one, number two. I feel like I'm at the eye doctor. That is a minuscule difference in stats. We're talking about 20 additional power, 50 additional range, tiny, tiny difference but it is a difference. There you go. They have completely separate versions that you can purchase with, with real money. And those separate versions are slightly more powerful. Whether or not that's a problem for you, you need to decide. Of course, you're always going to have your zany items like your feast on of work or your pencil. Those are always going to cost real money because they're funny. They're whimsical. Therefore, they're cool. And people want them. Therefore, they cost real money. 
Weapons can be purchased permanently with either currency. If I want the Mad Wrench on a permanent basis, let's do it. 1950 MP gets me seven days of the Mad Wrench, but if I want it permanently, 18,900 MP does it. If I want to look at the Advanced Mad Wrench, 970 points, that's just a little bit under a dollar, gets me seven days with this weapon. 9,135, just over nine dollars, will get me unlimited access to this weapon. Is that reasonable? I, I don't know. That's a decision for you to make. Is nine dollars to have this wrench reasonable for me? No, not at all. Is it reasonable for you? I don't know. Once you purchase a weapon on a permanent basis, you can upgrade it. Uh, you use this battery, which gets filled by playing games or purchasing more energy through the store to uh, upgrade your weapons. And they can be upgraded, I think it's five times. Yeah. So this is buying power. Yes, it is buying a minuscule amount of power, but it is buying power. This formula goes across all of their weapons, the standard pepper, the advanced pepper. Is there a difference between them? Yes, there is. Is it minute? Yes, it is. Does it exist? Yes, it does. The real buying of an advantage comes in with parts and accessories. So really quickly, if I want to buy this headdress, it's lovely. It cost me 320 to rent it for seven days, or I could go with this Super Saiyan hair, which cost me 1600 to rent it for seven days. So as I purchase any piece of headgear, I get to choose between run speed, or HP, and that's true across the board with all of your parts. You get to either enhance your run speed or enhance your HP. 2% or 40 HP. If I buy a micro points item, 1% or 16 HP. That is a difference. That is technically buying power. Do I care? No, no, not really. They attempt to balance this by using this simple system. I can buy this item permanently. 10,000 micro points, which I basically have right now, can get me the Super Saiyan hair on a permanent basis. This headdress, I cannot buy it permanently. You have to constantly re-up your paid items when it comes to your parts. They can't be purchased on a permanent basis. Do I think that entitles you to a slight advantage? Sure. You know, if you're paying to keep these items up, to buy them every 30, 60, 90 days, whatever, yeah, I'll throw some extra stats at you. In the end, the additional run speed, I don't think it, it amounts to more than 10% additional run speed above what you can get with MP items, and I don't believe the health is any more than about 100 extra HP. Could that be a difference maker? Could that be a game changer? Maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, but the cool thing about this is it allows you to customize your character. Do you want to be a fast runner or do you want to be a little bit more tanky with extra health? Cool, you know, add up all that extra health. Maybe you can survive a direct hit from a uh, weak bazooka. Cool, a sniper rifle. Whatever. That's cool. Go for it. Do that. Now when we get to accessories... This is when things start to change, and, and I think this is the place where it starts to get borderline as to whether this is uh, unacceptable for some people or not. Accessories fall into categories uh, as well. Let's take this sweet headdress off. Head, back, and waist, and each one of these finds you choosing between adding ammunition to one gun or the other. Two extra sniper bullets or three extra shotgun bullets. Of course, as you might imagine, if you purchase uh, a rock token version, you're going to get different and better statistics. Six and nine. This item in particular gives me pause. The addition of four extra sniper bullets is the potential for four additional kills before you have to come down from your scaffolding or the top of your, you know, Old West Tavern or whatever and find more ammo. That is kind of a big deal to me. Uh, is it game-breaking? No. Could it be game-changing? Yeah, it could. Uh, it could be game-changing, uh, giving that sniper the ability to get four more potential kills before having to depart and reload. 
it, it's, it's a tough call. Some people will have a problem with this, no doubt. Um, I am able to resolve it. You know, anytime that I get killed, I've never felt like it was because someone had an advantage. Most snipers don't stay in place that long. Uh, but then again, this isn't an excuse. It doesn't make it okay, or just because snipers will relocate very frequently and probably get ammo in the in their relocation, doesn't make that okay. Uh, it, it lessens the blow, I guess, for some, but it doesn't make it okay. This is the item that probably is the, uh, is the potential fly in the ointment for me and for some people. Oh, hey, black man, I don't want to be your friend. Not a racist thing. It's not, a, that's not a racist thing. It could have said white man and I would have still declined his, fun, his blind friend request. Uh, but the cool thing again, this allows you to customize towards your playstyle. Are you a sniper? Hey, you want some more extra bullets. Do you tend to prefer up close shotgun combat? Then you want some more shotgun shells. And this helps because sometimes you will find yourself in a position where it's difficult to obtain ammo, especially um, if you are something like a sniper, which relies on long range kills. Uh, you're not going to be getting the ammo which drops from the enemies that you kill. So these can be very, very helpful. On your back, you're going to get the basic option of Gatling gun or bazooka. And again, there is a difference between MP, here's my Stein, 20 and 3, or RT. Oh, hey. I didn't even know this existed. Plus 50 XP. Mmm. So uh, here we go. This is an item that I didn't even know existed. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay, you learn something new every day, I suppose. Learn something new every day. So uh, hey, this is brand new. I'm just finding this out in the wild as we make the video. 50% uh, XP, 50% XP. I don't have a problem with money buying you XP boosts. That's me personally. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with any game that uses uh, a boosting system, uh, enhances your XP rate, enhances your you know currency collection rate. I don't have a problem with that. To me, that's fair game for monetization, uh, and, and I don't think it really makes a huge difference. So uh, that's cool. I did not know that item existed. So there it is. Nice. But uh, again, the basic items, uh, you are looking at uh, 20 and 3 and 60 and nine. Making that decision for yourself. What do you value more? Sweet ass anchor, 20 and three. And if you wanna spend real money, 60 and nine. So that's the extent to which you can buy power in this game. I don't judge that to be unacceptable. I don't judge that to be game breaking, but you might have a different opinion. Last but not least, you have the ability to do some vanity stuff. This is the stuff that I think is perfectly fine. If you wanna spend $7 to reset your KD, Go for it. You know, my KD could probably use a reset. I'm not even positive. If you want to spend seven bucks to do that, more power to you, son. Go for it. If you're so concerned about your record that you want to spend five bucks to reset it, go for it. Also, if you want to charge your battery faster, do it. If you want to enhance your battery's capacity, do it. I don't care. Reset your upgrades on one of your permanent weapons, go for it. That's the kind of stuff that I have absolutely, positively no problem with them charging for. Stuff like name changes, appearance changes, go for it. Charge that stuff all day. I do not care. All right, this is pretty much going to do it for what I want to talk about in the outside the game interface. Uh, we're going to get to the action because, again, that's really where we want to be with a game like this. The action is the big deal. This stuff I needed to show you because you need to make an informed decision whether this game is for you or not. You want to know that there is a small ability to buy some power. How do you judge it? That's up to you. Make your decision. Try out the game. But first, let me show you what the game looks like in action. Team Deathmatch, here we go. I have one short game to show you here. Oh, my God. I Seriously, I picked this game that starts with me falling in the water like an idiot. Wow. Okay. So, uh, one short game to show you here, because this video is just going ridiculously long. So, uh, let's go ahead and get into the action. You can see me here in my default Nox uniform. This is how he comes right out the box. And uh, what you're going to see in this game is the mix of weapons, and you're also going to see uh, the, the pace of gameplay. I only want to give you this one short game. You know, play the game for yourself. Uh, if you want to see me playing more Microvolt, I will be playing uh, many free-to-play games in a new series that I have coming up, which is going to focus on free-to-play titles. And that is going to be a regular series that's going to pop up weekly. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a whole bunch of that stuff in advance. Watch this guy right here. I'm sorry. That should count as a suicide. I was already spraying the Gatling gun, and he walked into my spray that's I'm sorry I'll take the kill don't get me wrong but that should count as a suicide I'm, I'm sorry 
Uh, as I was saying before I rudely interrupted myself, I am going to be uh, instituting a, a new series that's going to focus on free-to-play games. And uh, I'm going to invite you guys, the viewer, uh, to play with me. You know, if you see me online, I might try to get in a game with you. It's going to be the sort of series that I record whenever I can. And I'm going to bank a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to have at least four episodes ready before I launch the series. And then I'm going to focus on uh, playing fun, free-to-play games for you guys uh, each and every week. So it could take me a little while to get that series going. Don't look forward to it in the immediate future, but it's going to happen. And you're going to get to see more games like Microvolts, uh, more games like, uh, well, Brawl Busters, <laughs> League of Legends, maybe, uh, and uh, so forth. Uh, other free-to-play shooters like uh, Alliance of Valiant Arms, etc. If I play it and it's free-to-play, I'm going to record it, and I am going to bring it to you guys. Hopefully that'll spread the word about free-to-plays, and uh, it will give you a little bit more content here on the channel. But let's focus on this game right now. The guns in this game work well. Um, actually, they don't feel really convincing. Uh, some of them, the Gatling gun is a very convincing feeling gun, I, I must say. Uh, but after thinking about it for some time, I really like that, uh, because these guns are toys. They're being used by action figures. As you can see, the Gatling gun shoots like little thumbtacks. Uh, I think that's cool that the guns don't feel impressively realistic, because they're being used by toys. They're toy guns, essentially. And they're not cartoony, goofy toy guns, but you get the point that these are toy guns, and, and I like that. Uh, I like that they don't have this you know, massive realistic sound effect on them. Uh, very, very good design decision. The game itself works well in the third person. Sometimes third person games can have some trouble, but I don't really think uh, that I've experienced much with this game. The controls are tight, uh, the movement is good, everything works really well in this game. And that's the most impressive thing to me. Are there better games out there? Well, most certainly, but this game is very, very well done. Uh, I like it a lot. You need to play it to determine whether or not you enjoy it. As uh, my team takes the victory here, we'll, uh, we'll roll a little more footage for you so you can enjoy some more uh, gameplay, but uh, let's go ahead and close things out. In conclusion, the game itself has a monetization model that does, to a small extent, allow you to purchase power. Make the decision for yourself whether that is cool or not. It is a fast-paced, classic-style deathmatch game, not team-based. It is not um, overly... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it is not overly realistic. Again, you are an action figure, so that would be expected. Uh, the, the pace of play is fast, the games are short, and to the point, you can pop in, you can play six or seven games before you know it, and uh, you have acquired quite a few micro points and a good chunk of XP. The customization options are solid, and uh, overall, the game is really, really fun. Go to microvolts.com for more information you already have a Rock Hippo account if you play Brawl Busters. So head over there, download the game, and get to play. I highly recommend it as a free-to-play shooter. If you do enjoy such things, you will enjoy Microvolts. Alright guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.